There's one. One on the BT. That one's built a little better. First cast with a crankbait. Got one fired up. Not a bad fish. Just offshore here on a little rock spine and first cast with the DT14 and picked up a little chunk, maybe like two pounder. We're just sitting here with the spot lock. We got the wind kind of blowing right in, right in on this little bit of a high spot on this uh, point. There's another one. We might have got them fired up here. A little better one. I think they're down there. And getting that front hook too. It's always a good sign when you're throwing a crankbait that you probably got the right color when they're getting that front hook like that. We got a little green tinge to the water here, so we got a crankbait color that's just a little bit brighter, a little bit noisier than um, you know, just your natural shad or bluegill or perch patterns. This blue back chartreuse is really hard to beat when you got some color in the water here. On this point, we got a high spot. It comes all the way off the, the shore and comes way out. And the depth kind of varies on this point. And right here, we've got a high spot. It's got some bigger rocks, some grass, and it tops out at about eight to 10 foot. And so when you're working a big long point like this or offshore cranking in general, and that's kind of the general pattern you're on, it's a real good deal to have more than just one uh, crankbait that dives to one certain depth. You want to have multiple crankbaits ready. Right now we got a DT10 and a DT14 and I'm just trying this DT10 a little bit over the top of this high spot. It ju it'll just come through the cover a little better. There's a little bit of grass on top and that DT14 was getting bogged up in the grass a little bit and so I picked up this DT10 and you can kind of burn it through the area a little bit better but it just helps to have multiple crankbaits ready to go you can cover all different water columns that way and you just you can be a lot more efficient out on the water instead of having to constantly retie so having a good assortment a couple different colors a couple different depths can really allow you to to cover more ground and be more efficient when you're out there and in turn, that's going to allow you to find, you know, hopefully more schools of fish throughout the course of the day. On this particular lake, we've identified that there's fish offshore. And so a crankbait's a really good way to cover a bunch of water and try and find those schools. There's another, there's one. On the school right here, caught three or four out of it thus far. No real big ones, but that one got the front hook again, so that's a good sign. Changing out your trebles on these crankbaits is a a real big deal too. Um, if you do a lot of cranking, you know it's it's important to be changing out your treble hooks every so often. And depending on the hard bait that you're using, I use different diameter trebles. These are, you know, we got a deeper diving crankbait. So, you know, you don't want to go with a real thin diameter hook. You're kind of, when you get those fish, you're kind of leaning into them a little bit more than maybe you would with a topwater or jerk bait. But these ones are just VMC hybrid trebles. They're sticky sharp. They're a little bit heavier gauge, so they're not going to flex on you when you do get a bigger fish. Something to keep in mind if you're doing a lot of crankbait fishing, it's definitely um, worth your time to 
swap out those treble hooks. It's going to allow you to land more fish too, just over the course of a day. Fish are notorious for, there's one, throwing trebles. So you can up your odds for sure by putting on better trebles and landing some more fish. They're not real big yet, but they're fun, that's for sure. So I put down that 10 foot diving plug and went back to the 14 footer. I caught one little one on that 10 foot diver up on top. But what we've kind of discovered is they're actually off the edge here. They're not really sitting right on top right now. And so this 14 just gets down a little bit more closer to the bottom where I believe a lot of these fish are, are sitting. But it's important to keep them honest too. Throughout the day, these fish, they'll move around on these points and these humps. They're not just going to sit in the same spot all day long. You know, in the morning, they might be more up top, low light conditions. So that's maybe where that DT-10 would come into play. But right now, it seems like they're eating this 14 a little bit better. That feels like a little better one. Uh, not huge. That one's got the back hook. That was on the DT-14 again. Um, the nice thing about the DT series is there's no guessing on really where that crankbait is gonna go in terms of the depth that it's gonna run. If you put 10 to 12 pound test fluorocarbon on, um, which is what we have on on both these setups right now, you know that bait on a long cast is gonna get down to DT14, it'll get to 14 feet, DT10 is going down to 10 foot. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it for the angler when it comes to picking out, you know, a couple different types of crankbaits. They make it real, real easy for you. We got this school fired up right now. They're not huge yet, but man, they're fun. And the 14s definitely seems to be out producing the 10 right now. So there's a good example of why I like to switch out trebles. That fish didn't get the front hook. He didn't even get the back hook in his mouth. But when he swatted at it, that treble reached out and grabbed him. And it, that's what a sticky treble hook will do. Um, not only a sticky one, but one that's got a pretty good gauge to it, like these VMC hybrids. Um, you know, a fish like that on a stock treble hook, it might flex and it might not be sharp enough to really grab them. A lot of times it might just pull, you know, barely pierce them and come out. These, Thicker gauge trebles that have a real good point on them, um, they'll help you land those types of bites a lot better um, throughout the course of a day, which in a tournament situation can be a real big deal, but when you're just out for fun too, everybody wants to catch more fish. So um, those upgraded trebles can definitely help you do that in those scenarios where they're not really crushing the bait, where they're swiping at it is really when upgraded treble hooks can pay off big time for you. Throughout the course of a day when you're fishing deep crankbaits, um, generally you're grinding these baits into the bottom. And it's usually hard bottom situations. So rock, gravel, sand. Um, so it, that in and of itself is gonna dull your hooks um, throughout the course of the day. So that's another good reason to be constantly changing out your trebles. But also having a higher grade treble that doesn't roll over, the points don't roll over as fast as maybe a stock treble is going to allow you to fish that certain hook a little bit longer without having to swap it out throughout the course of the day as much. Um, but you still want to be real cognizant of checking your hook points throughout the day, especially if you're catching a lot of fish and you're grinding your bait into hard bottom areas. You know, always be paying attention to your hook points. You know, you don't need to do it every cast, but you know, every so often you want to be checking those. And if you got a rolled over point or for whatever reason your hook flexed out on a bigger fish or if you got hung up and you had to pull it off and it flexed, 
you generally want to change that hook out. Um, it compromises kind of the overall integrity and strength of the hook when you flex it like that. So you definitely want to be changing that hook out if you flexed it at some point during the day. So here's my treble hook box that I keep for my deeper diving crankbaits. Um, like I said, I use that hybrid treble a lot. I really keep two sizes in here. And then I also vary the lengths of my of the shank. I got short shank hooks and then I got regular shank hooks. Um, really, I keep two sizes, a number three and a number five. On the anything from like a 14 up, like a 14, 16, 20, I'm using those threes or I'll even go to twos sometimes. And I'm usually using the longer shank. Um, I'll use these short shank threes on like a lipless bait. So a Narashi Vibe, something like that. I really like these short shank threes. The reason for the short shank is you can get away with a bigger bite uh, without having those hooks get tangled up on each other um, when you're reeling it in. So if you can get away with the longer shank and your hooks don't tangle, I typically go with that. Um, but if they're going to get tangled up, that's where that short shank comes into play. And then I use the number five on, on a DT10 um, or, a, or a DT uh, six even too. Um, and it's same thing, you know, short shank I'll use if my hooks are getting tangled up on a certain bait and then I'll get, I'll use that longer shank one. Um, just a, typically if on a DT 10, you don't have to use the short shank and you can get away with it. So, um, you don't need to carry a ton of treble hooks for deep cranking. I mean, just a few will get you by, you know, if you got sizes five through, you know, you know, five, four, three, um, you might need twos on your like DT 20s, but um, you know, a couple sizes, get a get some short shanks, some long shanks, and that's really going to cover you, um, you know, for all your really deep diving crankbait and, and lipless crankbait uh, fishing. Oh, dude, oh, that's a better one if it's not a pike. He's not huge, but he's. Best one we've probably seen yet. It's a little better one. He got that front hook. Alright, that's not a bad one. Here's another reason for those troubles that I was talking about earlier when when they just have one it's really key but when you can get so he got it pretty good to begin with probably wasn't going to lose that fish but a little insurance is when that other hook kind of wraps around and grabs it on the side and a lot of times when you got a sharp hook it'll do that and you'll you'll get you know hooks all over around in their in their face and that can just be a little bit of an insurance policy for you in case this hook were to come out you might still be able to land them with that one. Um, so just another reason to have those real sharp trebles is when you're fighting that fish, a lot of times that outside hook will, will grab them. We'll get them back here. There's another one. Jeez, that one feels big. This one ain't moving as much as the other ones. I don't know if we got them fouled or we got a big one here. That's a pretty nice one. I might have to go in the seat to land this guy. That's a pretty good one. All right. How about that one? It's a pretty good chunk. Healthy fish. Been feeding up on some gills down there. We got a real good bluegill imitator. He's got trebles all over in his face. Need the pliers for this guy. He had it kind of weird. A little bit outside the mouth, but he's still got both hooks. We'll get that one back and I'll kind of talk a little bit more. So one thing you really want to pay attention to with every fish that you do catch on a crankbait, 
really pay attention to how they've got the bait in their mouth and that can tell you a lot it can give you a lot of clues if a lot of them are just getting the back hook they might just be lethargic in general and maybe the bite will pick up throughout the day but sometimes it might mean you need to switch up your color or your presentation a little bit sometimes it can be angles on these deeper spots you might just need to shift the boat around and cast at a different angle if they've got that front treble in their mouth or they got the whole thing choked you know a lot of times you got the right bait that one that last one had both hooks and they're both on the outside of his mouth so you know it's it's a clue that maybe the maybe there's just a lot of fish down there and he swiped at it and just got it that way that's the first one we've had outside of the mouth so i'm not going to change quite yet but if we continue to see that trend it might be worth just switching up colors a little bit um, you know they might be getting conditioned to this color now we've caught i don't know five or six seven out of this school so if the school shuts down or we're getting some swipes on this bait where they're not getting it real well, you know, change up your color, um, maybe go a little bit deeper, a little bit shallower, and just see if you can generate some more bites. But you can see kind of all the, all the rock out here, and we've got almost, I wouldn't call it a ledge, but it's kind of almost a ledge for Midwest fishing anyways, and we're kind of just grinding the crankbait right down the side of that thing right now, and that's where they're sitting. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's another big one. Big old head shakes. If it's a bass. That's oh, yeah, a bass. Another healthy one. That, that one got it, T-boned. Got the front treble real good. Be careful we don't get a hook in us. Another good one. You can see, I think we got the right color there. He had the front treble. He probably ate it about like that. Got the second one on the top of his head. Another good chunky fish. They're fired up down there. My cranking setup for this DT14 today anyways, is a, it's just a 7.4. It's a medium heavy, moderate glass rod. Um, I really like a glass rod when I'm throwing deep crankbaits with treble hooks. I just feel like That's I can nice keep one. more fish pinned that way. A lot of times when you lose fish on a crankbait, it's going to be around the boat when they make a surge and that glass just does a better job of absorbing that last little surge or two at the boat. Um, so 7.4, medium, heavy, moderate. You're going to have that 7.4 rod allows you to make some longer casts. And then I usually just crank with either 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon line fluorocarbon sinks and it's just going to allow your bait to get down a little bit better than a monofilament would. Um, you know if you're cranking around a ton of grass like a lipless crankbait maybe you could throw braid but I really prefer fluorocarbon um, 10 to 12 pound. It's going to get your bait down to that desired depth and, and to the depth that you know the DT14 it's going to get down to 14 foot if you're throwing that uh, pound test line. The gear ratio is a big deal when you're um, throwing deep crankbaits. We see a lot of high speed reels come out these days, you know, eight to ones, nine to ones, and those have their time and place, but it's definitely not when you're throwing a deep crankbait. Um, you're really gonna wear yourself out throughout the course of a day if you got a higher speed reel. It's just gonna pull that bait through the water and really just plow through the water. Um, it's really gonna wear you out. You really want a slower gear ratio reel. You know, the highest I would probably throw is seven to one, but I really prefer like 6.5 to one or less. What it does is it gives you a little more power um, and it allows your crankbait to just kind of work how it's supposed to work. You know, it gets, it gets down at a nice easy pace and kind of roots around down there. Um, kind of like a, you know, a four wheel drive truck would just, you know, kind of root, rooting around um, on the bottom and, and getting reaction strikes. So that slower gear ratio reel is going to be much more pleasant to fish with throughout the course of a day when you're throwing, you know, a DT 10, 14, 16, 20 foot diving crankbait. Uh -oh. You know, with a, like a six foot diver or less, sometimes you want a little faster retrieve depending on the day, but these deeper cranks, you really want that slower gear ratio and that's gonna suit you real well.